and peace. These are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. In the last few weeks, there has been a bit of a heated argument, a bit of a banter between Lutheran pastors and Lutheran theologians, Lutheran laymen too, for that matter, going around on certain Facebook sites about the song, Mary, Did You Know? Have you heard the song? You know the song, right? Mary, Did You Know? It's actually a pretty popular song. I uh, hear it on the radio quite often. And among these Lutheran people who care about such matters, there is a heated debate about the merits of this song. Some say it is a beautiful explication of the incarnation, of the mystery of the incarnation, that God has become flesh. The Almighty God lays in a manger in Bethlehem. And the beauty of this mystery is asking the question, Mary, when you kissed this baby boy, did you know that it is the Son of God? Well then, those on the other side of the argument say, it's a horrible song. Of course Mary knew. Gabriel told her everything she needed to know. Gabriel explained it to her. She knew exactly who this child was. There was no mystery about it to Mary at all. Mary knew that she was a virgin. Mary knew that this was not Joseph's kid. She knew that this was, in fact, the Son of God. Now, to be fair, I've come somewhere in the middle of this, and I have not, uh, I have not weighed in on Facebook, as is my tendency. But I can, I can see both sides. I think there is something of beauty in the words of this song, but I also agree that Mary most definitely knew who Jesus was, why he had come. And yet Mary, like most of us, had moments of forgetting. Certainly, our reading, our gospel reading today is one of those examples where Mary seems to have forgotten who Jesus was and why he had come. There is also the incident in Mark chapter 3, where Mary and Jesus' brothers are standing outside waiting for Jesus, looking frantically for him, trying to get him to stop talking because the things he is saying sound crazy and are going to get him killed. Yes, in that moment, it would seem that Mary forgot that Jesus was the Son of God and what he had come to do. Indeed, there are times when Mary knew exactly who this child was, but sometimes her motherly instincts took over, and she sought rather to protect him, to scold him, to nurture him, and to teach him rather than to let him be who he was, the Son of God, growing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. We could just as easily turn this song around on us, on ourselves, and say, instead of Mary, did you know, we could say, Gary, did you know? Or Kurt, did you know? Sheridan, did you know? Any of us can be guilty of this. We know exactly who Jesus is, don't we? We know exactly that Jesus was true God, begotten of the Father from eternity. We know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, also true man, born of the Virgin Mary. We could ask ourselves, did you know that Jesus was begotten of the Father, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made? Did you know that Jesus was God of God, light of light, very God of very God? Did you know these things? Of course you did. 
You just said it. You just confessed your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed that you know exactly who Jesus is and why he has come. But many of us have our moments of forgetfulness, don't we? We have our moments where our human instincts, our sinful natures, take over and we begin to doubt who Jesus is, what he has done, and maybe most importantly, where he may be found. You can name any circumstance. Many of us have been there, right? We hit some kind of low in our lives and we begin to wonder, where is Jesus? Someone doesn't get the job that they were hoping for, or they lose their job and their income and their way of life, and they wonder, where's Jesus? A parent watches their child getting into trouble, hanging out with the wrong group of friends, making poor decisions, and ruining their lives. And the parents cry out, where is Jesus? You visit the doctor, and the doctor cryptically tells you that he has some concerns and wants you to see a specialist. And you are burdened with the fear of the unknown, wondering what the diagnosis will be. And when the diagnosis comes, and you hear those words that no one wants to hear from a medical professional, you begin to ask yourself, where is Jesus? And then, We've all been there. Death enters your immediate circle. A very close friend or family member breathes their last. And I'm not even going to say a tragic death because every death is tragic. Every death is against God's will and against God's plan. And we mourn and we grieve and we cry out, where is Jesus? Yes, it doesn't take much for us, like Mary, to forget who Jesus is, what he has done for us, and where he may be found. And suddenly, our bold confessions of faith are reduced to Mary's question, Jesus, why have you treated us so? It doesn't take long for us to forget that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It doesn't take long for us to forget that whatever we are suffering, our Jesus suffered first, the ultimate suffering for us. It doesn't take long for us to forget Jesus' promise that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will be with us. Yes, it doesn't take long for us to forget Jesus' last words to his apostles before his ascension, Lo! I am with you always, even to the end of the age. No, instead of our confession of faith, we wander aimlessly asking the question, where is Jesus? And then Jesus responds to us just as he responds to his mother and her husband Joseph. He says, Mary, did you know? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Or perhaps a better translation, that I must be among the things of my father. Or even better, I must be about my father's business. It's all the same, really. The things of the father, the business of the father, the will of the father, all has to do with the father's house. It was in his father's house, in this house of God, then the temple, now the church, where the word of God was read, studied, taught, and learned. It was in the house of the Almighty God where prayers were offered and heard. And for that matter, it was in the temple that the prayers were answered. It was in the temple where sacrifices were made, sins were atoned for, and guilt was forgiven. And Jesus, the one who not only teaches the word, but is the word made flesh, Jesus, who not only hears our prayers, but intercedes for us to his Father in heaven, Jesus, 
who would be the sacrifice to bring about the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life for all, this Jesus must be in his Father's house. And so, that is where we must find him. There was one other time in Mary's life when she seemingly forgot who Jesus was. She seemingly forgot the true identity of her baby boy. And this is when Jesus was crucified, when he died, when he was buried in the tomb. And Mary went with the other women to anoint his body. Just like in the events of our gospel reading today, it was three days later. The three days is significant. Three days later, she went to the tomb and she found Jesus to be missing. Missing for three days. And probably she was just as astonished and just as angry. Probably thinking that somebody had taken the body without telling them. But the angel stood there and said to Mary, and the other women there for that matter, Mary, did you know? Mary, didn't you know that he is not here? He is risen just as he said. Yes, Mary knew this. Mary certainly had heard this from Jesus, but she needed to be reminded by the messenger of God. So also, we come to the house of the Lord. We come to the house of our Heavenly Father to be reminded of this good news. We come to the house of God to increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. We come to the house of God to be with Jesus and to receive his life-giving gifts. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is who he says he is. He is the Son of the Most High God, and Jesus does what he says he does. He shows mercy to sinners, taking those sins to Calvary's cross, and coming to seek and save the lost. And Jesus is precisely where he must be, in his Father's house, in the church so that your faith may be nourished by the hearing of his word, so that your sins may be forgiven, and where, where your prayers may be heard and answered. He is today in his Father's house, attending to the things of the Almighty God and doing his Father's business. He is fulfilling the will of his Heavenly Father, even in our church here today. And so when times are tough, when we hit those low points in our life and we find ourselves asking, where is Jesus? We also are to come racing to God's house so that we may find him here, eager and waiting to serve us in our time of need. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, we all fall short of our bold confession of faith. We all forget at times who Jesus is and what he has done for us. But dear friends, do not forget where he can be found. Do not forget his church, where sins are forgiven and consciences can be at peace. Do not forget his Father's house, where life eternal may be received. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.